Hi, I'm Laura Lewis, and I'm here at Square One, a new resource center where the motto is, Better Building Starts Here. This is where you can find loads of information and experienced folks to help plan your project from design options all the way through permitting. Jefferson County is a unique and special place. Whether you have lived here for decades or just recently bought land or a home, you already know rain is a fact of life around here. Too much rain can cause problems like flooding and standing water where you don't want it. Some of us are shoreline owners that face other water-related challenges, like landslides on bluffs or beach erosion. Additionally, rainwater runoff can carry pollution into our local waters. Whether you are trying to solve an existing water problem or are considering an improvement that might affect water on your property, there are new techniques and options available. They include rain gardens, reducing hard surface area, stream buffering, site design and planning, retaining native vegetation, and other smart solutions. These techniques can help you protect your investment, protect your family from a potentially dangerous situation, fit right in with our beautiful surroundings, and could even save you money in the long run. Homeowners, landowners, and their development professionals can make Square One their first stop in finding answers to water-related issues. Dave and Lucy Parisi did just that. They recently moved from a big city to Jefferson County. Dave found information about the Resource Center online, and then he came in to learn more. Our property goes all the way to Discovery Bay, and it's actually quite a slope going down, and, and the house is way far back. Mm -hmm. But it turns out there's some steep parts in the corner. Uh, it does go sloping all the way down, even to a point of uh, some cliff. Kind of a cliff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a resource center I, I found. I went down there. People were very nice. And I found some leaflets and pamphlets and started reading up. Um, so it didn't take a lot of time, but I did learn a lot about, ah, OK, that's what they mean by rain garden. Many properties in Jefferson County are located between a road and the shore. This poses special problems of rainwater running off roads onto people's property, which could undermine their beach and even lead to failure of their bluff. County resident Tom Giske faced that issue. My name is Tom Giske, and we're standing in the garden that Flo and I created beginning in 2005. The driveway that was here was very compacted and therefore the water ran over the top rather than soaking into the ground. The solution we chose was to tier the property so that the garden could be established in areas of level ground, cause the water to soak in as it flowed from the top of the property to the sound. With the help of some very good landscapers, we chose to terrace the property into level areas of ground upon which we could locate the garden, thereby cause the water to soak in rather than to flow across the ground. This is a good example right here where the garden is uh, terraced in one direction, path flows in a second direction, again with pervious material. The uh, path is curved in order to cause the water to flow across the path rather than down the path. There was a rather large lawn between the house and the canal. So we chose to take out the lawn, return the bank to its natural state, retaining the, uh, the wild cherries and salal that was growing there natively. As you can see by looking around, the garden really is a success. We have managed the water flow while creating a very wonderful place to be. Jerry Fry was also having problems with rainwater and created a rain garden to catch polluted runoff coming down the street to his property. His neighbors, Lynn and Bill Meyer, liked Jerry's idea so much, they now are also creating their own rain garden. A unique challenge for shoreline homeowners can be beach erosion and subsequent flooding during storms. Traditionally, the answer was armoring of the shoreline with rocks or other hard structure. In many locations, this has been found to cause more problems than it solves. 
A local group of homeowners faced this issue and came up with a different way to solve the problem. Hi, I'm John Lewis, and I live in a small neighborhood situated along the shores of Dungeness Bay. On February 4th, 2006, we awoke to uh, considerable flooding in our neighborhood. I quickly realized that, that our berm, our protective earth and berm, natural earth and berm had, had breached. And later in the day, I learned that, that, that at least six of our properties, of our neighbors, had, um, had breaches in their berm, which allowed the Dungeness Bay to become part of our neighborhood. It wasn't just one property owner's problem to solve, but it was a problem we all had to solve together because it affected every one of our properties. I'm Bill Henry. I'm a neighbor of John Lewis's. We moved to this area because we wanted to be participants with nature, not just spectators. And we got to participate a little bit more with nature when our berm was breached and overtopped and Dungeness Bay came in. 13 of the neighbors felt that we really should do something. So we as a group decided that we would go ahead with a natural berm, some logs buried inside it but out of sight, and a revegetation program to stabilize that berm. What it does is maintain the natural beauty of the area. It maintains the flood protection that we need from Dungeness Bay. And it gives us, as the homeowners, an asset that we need to manage carefully. We have a showpiece for others to understand that you don't need concrete and riprap in order to protect yourself from the bay, and that you can do something that is both economically attractive, environmentally attractive, and scenically attractive at the same time in a project. I'm Dave Schreffler. I'm a local habitat biologist, and I had the privilege of working on this property on the shores of uh, Dungeness Bay. From a, both a personal and a professional standpoint, this is a project uh, that I'm very proud of. I think it was the way you want every project to end up. It was a win-win both for the environment and for the local property owners. Streamside property owners are also faced with unique challenges, and they have exciting opportunities to enhance fish and wildlife habitat. Along Chimicum Creek, Dave Scott inherited a piece of property that has a conservation easement. We caught up to Dave along with Eric Kingfisher of the Jefferson Land Trust on a day when volunteers were hard at work planting trees. Well basically what they're doing is they're restoring the uh, habitat along the creek, uh, both evergreen and deciduous trees, and the purpose of it is to provide shading for the creek so that the salmon fry have a chance of surviving. It also provides a habitat for wildlife along the creek corridor where they can move back and forth under cover. Hi, I'm Eric Kingfisher. I'm the stewardship director for Jefferson Land Trust. And the conservation easement is a permanent uh, restriction on the property, a permanent protected area on the property. Otherwise, the rest of our property is used for other purposes. Actually, it reduces what you have to pay in property taxes, and there's uh, multiple other benefits to it. I mean, Look at all the shrubbery that's being planted at absolutely no cost to the, to the property owner. So it's, um, it's a win-win situation. It's a win situation for the wildlife and it's a win situation for the homeowner. Whether you are a do-it-yourself type or prefer to hire professionals, there are a lot of choices to make when dealing with your property. Some of these may require permits, some not. Land use regulations change over the years, and the staff at the Department of Community Development are professionals with expertise in planning, building, regulatory requirements, and the permit process. There are workstations here with computers specifically set up to help you find in-depth answers. You can pick up pamphlets that describe various options and see hands-on demonstrations, like this one showing how pervious concrete works. We can also share with you where you can see some of these techniques demonstrated. We hope that you will come by Square One and take a look. Square One is located inside the Jefferson County Department of Community Development, next to QFC at 621 Sheraton in Port Townsend. Better building starts here. I found this, um, I forgot what it's called, but the space where there's no grass. 
and I kind of got the extra things out that were there. And then I started digging, and my friend um, got me, an uh, uh, old friend of mine got me a tree, and and I was digging, and then I put it to the side. It takes a little while, and I put it in, and then put it all around the roots, and then I planted a tree all by myself without my dad knowing. Was that hard? No. <laughs> Did it take Because I've done it a lot. Oh, I see. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much for showing me your tree. You're welcome.